Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Instacart XK. It has been quite a while since I posted my last video because I've been quite busy with my personal life. But today I wanted to make a video not on reviewing cars, but to talk about a topic which has been hotly discussed in the Hong Kong car community, literally in the past 24 hours. And this is about this US car influencer called Larry Chen, who came to Hong Kong and did a few YouTube videos of the Hong Kong JDM modified car culture uh, a month or two ago. Now, Larry Chen, uh, from my understanding, is uh, he's from the US. Uh, he started off with car photography, I think, and, and generated a, a pretty big following. He has close to a million followers on Instagram, and he makes these YouTube videos for the Haggerty uh, YouTube channel, which has 3 million subscribers. Um, so, I, uh, to be honest, I, I didn't know who he was before because I'm, I'm not uh, really familiar with the JDM scene. And this guy is a, a JDM-focused uh, uh, influencer. Um, but then a few Hong Kong car enthusiasts invited him over to uh, uh, do a feature on Hong Kong car culture, hoping that he can you know, show it to the world, the great car culture that we have. Um, so, you know, I, I watched his videos. He's, uh, um, after he, 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 he came and made them, and immediately, I think you can tell, um, his videos, his approach is quite provocative. Um, and, and he does uh, look at the, the sort of darker picture in Hong Kong car culture with respect to the uh, police crackdown on uh, illegally modified cars, um, uh, car meets, and, and, and whatnot. Um, and he did a few episodes on, on the Hong Kong uh, car scene and immediately you notice um, there were also some misinformation um, and, and outright lies in some of his uh, videos, uh, which I'll go into later. But I think uh, the, the straw that broke the camel's back was when he uh, posted his latest, his uh, probably, I don't know if it's last, but his latest video from his Hong Kong series about um, Hong Kong private car collections, where in there he made some just outrageous lies uh, about uh, how, how the Hong Kong uh, government works, uh, how car collectors are so afraid of the government. Um, and then uh, he also got into some beef with a popular Hong Kong car YouTuber XRX about uh, some privacy issue from his interview with XRX. Uh, so immediately, overnight, this became like the um, hot topic uh, in the car community with a lot of people quite pissed off at his misinformation, like myself. Um, and so I decided to do this video to debunk uh, some of the misinformation from Larry Chen's videos, um, some of which was actually quite personal, uh, and I'll tell you why later. Um, so without further ado, let's, let's give you guys a, a clip from his first video to kind of set the scene um, of, of uh, set the tone of his Hong Kong series well, video. Well, these guys that showed up to the meet are always on edge because legitimately at any time they could get their car taken away. And it's normal to them. For deleting his airbag, even though the NSXR never came with airbags to begin with. So from those two short clips um, from his first Hong Kong video, you can see how he immediately uh, jumped on the point that you know, Hong Kong uh, JDM modified car owners uh, go out in fear every day uh, because they'll lose their car at any moment. And he also covered this huge uh, JDM car meet at the Sunny Bay with an insane amount of police presence, um, towing cars and impounding cars and whatnot. Now, I think some context have been missing here and not explained. Um, and that is that Sunny Bay car meet, uh, and as mentioned by Larry himself earlier in the video, is the biggest JDM car meet in Hong Kong, more than 100 cars and whatnot. But what he didn't mention was that car meet was actually hosted for him, for him by the organizers because He's a huge JDM influencer, uh, so they had this huge car meet. All these JDM, local JDM enthusiasts wanted to come and meet him. It was a huge, big event for Larry Chen. Um, and unfortunately, the police here, they're quite good at gathering intelligence. So they usually, for these huge high-profile events, uh, they, they, they do 
know about it early on, and and then they will come. They will come in full force uh, uh, into impound cars and whatnot. Now, I'm not saying that's right. It's not cool. It's not cool that um, the JDM car uh, enthusiasts have, have to be prosecuted like that all the time. Um, and and as a fellow car enthusiast, I I don't I don't enjoy you know seeing fellow car enthusiasts. Uh, you know, going out every time and having risk of, of having to deal with the authorities. But what I want to highlight here is that the context is one, this event was pretty high profile because it was for Larry, for Larry Shen, huge influencer, which the police got hold of, um, which this point would be quite important later. And I'll explain why. I'll explain later in my video why this point about, you know, the show being for Larry Chen and the police getting wind of it is important. And secondly, the, the context is that we don't have these huge JDM car meets or car meets of that size, JDM or not, every weekend, every day. Meaning the police presence is not always so big and, 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 and crazy. Yes, there are police, they do have their anti-modified cars uh, operations from time to time they do do that they do told they do impound there's no misinformation in that but what was shown in that video is not a regular day-to-day -day, every weekend type of scenario that was you know almost as big as it gets when it comes to jdm car meets and police towing illegally modified jdm cars um, so i thought that context was needed now next up is the first sort of major piece of misinformation in Larry's uh, first video and this one is quite close to home and one misinformation that I'm really quite unhappy with was because they're actually very close to the Hong Kong government and they give out these moving permits that allow you to drive a left-hand drive vehicle just for a few days out of the year what on earth are you talking about in this scene here, was talking about the movement permit offered by the Classic Car Club of Hong Kong. And his reason was because our club is very close to the government. Shut the hell up, man. You don't know what you're talking about. The movement permit was from colonial days. Our club was founded in 1979 by a bunch of uh, expats who were actually some of which are police officers. And at that time, the transport department was actually under the police department and therefore all these sort of movement permit and whatnot actually came from decades ago it is a legacy permit that we have now while we're grateful that the hong kong government still keeps it it is not because we're close to the government that's why we have this movement permit thing get your facts straight and if you can't get your facts straight don't spool out nonsense and misinformation like that by doing this you are splitting people you're pitching one group of car enthusiasts against another because oh the classic car club is close to the government that is not the case so please first misinformation debunk when many of you watched part one of this hong kong car culture series a lot of people were wondering what happens to the car after they get impounded well the owners have to pay a fine and they have to return the vehicles back to 100 percent stock if they can't be returned back to stock, which as you can tell, a lot of them are so modified, they can never be street registered again, which means they either sit and rot or they have to be sold outside of Hong Kong. Later that night, one of the owners headed home and he accidentally turned down the wrong way in an alley. A police officer saw him and arrested him, impounded his car, and he spent the night in jail. So in this clip, he was explaining what happens after an illegally modified uh, car is impounded by the police, where he explained that if it can't be reverted to original, um, uh, the car would not be uh, legally road registered again and therefore can't be driven on the roads. And that's only partially right, because from my understanding from friends' experience, when a modified car gets impounded, the police will give you a list of illegal modifications that they have identified. They'll give you that list and give you back the car. And within a specified period of time, you will have to bring your car back to one of the government appointed test centers uh, to see if those uh, list of parts have been changed back to original. Now, the thing here is though, the police don't necessarily list out 100% of everything illegal about your car. 
it is more often than not a few parts, you know, exhaust, wheels, brakes, whatever, and then they give it back to you. The car does not necessarily have to be reverted to 100% original to get through the police um, impound uh, and the list of modifications they send you. I have a few friends who have had their cars impounded before for illegal modifications, and all of them got their car back without needing to do really a whole 100%, you know, car CK original restoration kind of thing. So that part is a little bit exaggerated. And on the part about the GTL owner who went the wrong way and got arrested, if you look at the news, uh, online news by HK01, which was the, the one, uh, uh, the picture quoted by Larry, he, the owner was arrested for dangerous driving because he was driving down the wrong way of the road, not for illegal modifications. Yes, his car may have been impounded, but he wasn't arrested himself because of having an illegal car. And I highly, highly doubt the owner spent the night in jail because in Hong Kong, for driving, you know, for, for, for things like driving offenses, they usually don't bother putting you in jail. And the news report, the same news report did say the, the owner made bail. So again, a bit exaggerated there to, to draw a very, to paint a very dark and ugly picture of the Hong Kong car scene, I think. Now the clip you guys are about to see is the controversial part, the most controversial part out of the Hong Kong series by this Larry Chen guy. And it is from his latest video where he uh, explored and featured a few private collections in Hong Kong. Now you take a look at this video and come back, I'll tell you why it is so utterly, utterly ridiculous that bullshit he spewed throughout this clip. Unfortunately, as I mentioned before, we went to quite a few collections where we were not allowed to show anything at all. But some collectors did allow us to show some of the cars, but we were unable to show the location of the building, the building itself, even down to inside of the elevator doors. No names, no faces, no problem. Why are these owners so secretive? Well, year after year since Great Britain returned Hong Kong back to China in 1997, it's become more and more like China every single day. These owners are legitimately afraid of getting their cars and their storage places taken away. Most of these cars are still legal for Hong Kong roads, but it's better not to let the government know that they have all of these valuable vehicles. Because at any moment, it can all be taken away for no reason at all. It's interesting to me because a lot of places in Europe or the US, it's best not to publish where collections are located because the owners are afraid of them getting stolen. But in Hong Kong, car theft is not a big deal. What they're afraid of is the government. I don't know how any of these individuals enjoy cars at all. Now, I actually know all the owners of the uh, few collections that, that he put on bureau about these secret collections that he doesn't want to, uh, the owners doesn't want people to know. Um, they. People can be low profile and secretive here, rich people in Hong Kong, not because of anything other than they don't want people to know about their wealth. It's, a, it's quite an Asian thing, it's quite a Chinese thing. You don't necessarily want to flaunt your wealth everywhere. Not everyone is a Gen Z or millennial using Instagram showing off their wealth. Some of these are older owners, older car enthusiasts, and they're just from a different era. They don't want the whole world to know how, how, how insanely rich and how expensive and valuable their car collection is. And then that clip took a dark turn when it went full on political. Oh, after 1997, after Britain, British, uh, the uh, United Kingdom given uh, Hong Kong back to China every day, uh, Hong Kong is more and more like China. And uh, uh, these uh, car collectors are scared of the government coming in any time any time to confiscate their cars and even the uh, building housing their cars for no reason whatsoever. What utter bollocks is that? That never happens in Hong Kong, okay? 
police and authorities don't just come in and confiscate personal assets for no reason at any time. That is pure political nonsense, pure fake news and misinformation. And I have no idea why Larry would say something like that to draw, to paint such a bad picture of Hong Kong. I, I don't even know where he got that nonsense from. And it is really sad that, you know, he was invited over here by local car enthusiasts for him to see the, the, the local car culture, to show it to the world. And since day one, since his first clip, he was trying to uh, uh, paint such a dark picture of the Hong Kong culture from the police crackdown and then to end with this government confiscation pure nonsense. Now, what Larry doesn't understand is Hong Kong has been going through a roller coaster for a few years already for a number of reasons. Everyone, you know, people can be happier. And for you, you know, people were excited, people looked up to you. Uh, respected you and when you came to, to Hong Kong to make videos all these JDM enthusiasts were so excited and then you make something like that right to, to, to spoof such misinformation about Hong Kong as if our reputation on the international stage hasn't been impacted and affected enough in the last few years this is really unacceptable and secondly the main point I want to draw is what does he gain by stepping on Hong Kong and targeting and insulting the authorities like that. Yes, he does get clicks, but at the end, who suffers? As I mentioned earlier on, the police here, they gather their intelligence well. I for sure, I am sure that they know about these Larry Chen videos and I can't imagine they'll be happy about it. What do you think they will do after seeing these Larry Chen videos? Will they decide, oh no, we have been so unfair to JDM owners, so let's treat them better and stop our uh, impounding and, and operations against JDM modified cars? Or do you think they will come back even harder next time there's a big JDM meet after seeing these crap talked about them non-stop by this Larry Chen influencer? In the end, who suffers? The Hong Kong car community suffers. When influencers like this speak irresponsibly and with all these misinformation. Now, a friend of mine who knows Larry said uh, maybe he got the information wrong from uh, uh, local people. Well, verify it. You have a million followers on your Instagram, okay? You're somebody. The YouTube channel you work for has three million subscribers. You have to be responsible for the things you say and do your due diligence. If you didn't see it yourself, if you can't, can't verify yourself, if the owners didn't tell you your, themselves that they are scared of uh, government confiscating their ca cars and, and, and valuables randomly, which I'm sure they didn't because I know these owners, then they're pissed off about what was said, then don't say it. You have a responsibility to keep. So in conclusion, uh, I am pissed off and saddened by all these misinformation about you know our car community in Hong Kong but most importantly I think it was really a missed opportunity you know you have this famous JDM influencer from the US coming lots of excited local JDM enthusiasts to meet him he does nice photographies nice videographies you could have made a very good um, uh, presentation of Hong Kong, but instead he decided to dominate, dominate his entire Hong Kong series with you know, such negativity about the Hong Kong car scene, saying to it as if like we are all victims and suffering on a daily basis, not able to enjoy cars, and ending it with the ridiculous fake news that all of us live in fear that the government can come in and just confiscate our cars anytime they want for no reason whatsoever. So on that note, uh, I hope you, I hope local enthusiasts who watch the Larry Chen videos can relate with what I'm saying. I hope international viewers who have, who watch this would know that a, a lot of the misinformation in the Larry Chen Hong Kong series. And if you like this, please give us a like, please subscribe, please remember to click the bell button next to the subscribe button so you know when our next video is. Thank you and have a good day.